Dorothea Bins, Black Heart Woman. During World War II, the ruthless organization known as the SS, or the Schutzstaffel Protective Echelon, was founded by Adolf Hitler, a highly disliked leader of humankind. The SS, established to counteract anti-Nazi sentiment in society, protected Hitler and other Nazi officials and speakers. Survivors and academics usually cited the concentration camps as the pinnacle of the entire organization. The Schutzstaffel's leaders had meticulously planned how its members would utilize terror to significant effect in the centers. Many of us are familiar with names like Joseph Goebbels and Heinrich Himmler because of the warped legacy of the Nazis. However, it wasn't only males who carried out heinous deeds of evil. Though most people don't know much about the Nazi party's female members, some are horrifying, and indeed listening to their heinous and vicious deeds isn't for the faint-hearted. Female guards were solely deployed in concentration camps for women, adhering to a tight gender separation, as per Heinrich Himmler's demands. These camps were set up in a manner that was nearly equivalent to the male centers that were established in 1933 to 1934. These female guards were equally, if not even more, brutal than male guards. Several female guards were tried in 1946 for war crimes at a concentration camp for only women. The Hamburg-Ravensbrück war crimes trials in Germany got underway on December 5, 1946. The largest and most infamous of the Nazi concentration camps for women, Ravensbrück was located 56 miles north of Berlin and was established in 1939. Seven of the 16 individuals on the stand that day were female. Dorothea Bintz was one of them, a 26-year-old woman who had attained the position of assistant chief warden despite her gender. Shooting lashing and placing dogs on inmates were among Bince's crimes. By the time the trials were over on July 1948, 21 of the 38 accused were female. Uncomfortable, under-recognized realities concerning the place of women in the Third Reich are revealed by the Ravensbrück narrative. In Ravensbrück, known as Aufseren, hundreds of Nazi female guards received their primary training. These women were sent to camps around the Reich. After receiving training, in the brutality trade, including instruction in beatings and whippings, as well as verbal and psychological harassment. The infamous Dorothea Bintz, nicknamed the Black Heart Woman, was born in 1920 and grew up in Forsterei Dusterlake in northern Germany. Bintz attended school until she was 15. Then, after working briefly in the food sector, she worked in the kitchens in Ravensbrück, an all-female concentration camp north of Berlin. Dorothea, known as Labinz by the French prisoners, arrived at Ravensbrück at the age of 19 from a nearby small agricultural village where she worked as a maid and applied to serve as a guard. Bintz assisted Uber Aufserin, Emma Zimmer, Joanna Langefeld, Maria Mandel and Anna Klein as Aufserin. Bintz was regarded as the actual star of the camp and the head guard was entirely eclipsed by her deputy, even though she was subordinate to higher-ranking guards. She performed various tasks around the camp, including cooking and washing. Later, it is said that she oversaw the bunker where inmates were tortured and murdered. In September 1940, she was appointed deputy director of her prison block, and in the summer of 1942, she was promoted to director. In July 1943, Bintz received an unofficial promotion, to Stell Vertretender Oberaufserin, Deputy Chief Wardress, and in February 1944 the position received formal status. Later, her abuse was characterized as unyielding. She was reputed to keep an eye out for the weakest or most terrified detainees, whom she would shower with lashes or blows. Between 1943 and 1945, while serving on the command staff, she oversaw training and gave tasks to over 100 female guards at once. Ruth Clausius, one of the system's cruelest female guards, was allegedly caught by Bintz. Numerous Ravensbrück witnesses described Bintz beating, slapping, kicking, whipping, shooting and stomping on women with her large, cumbersome boots. Nevertheless, she soon progressed through the ranks because the camp valued her vicious streak. Bintz climbed the ladder in Ravensbrück and eventually rose to the position of one of the most infamous guards. She marched through the camp, flogging and thrashing the detainees herself. She even forced a lady to the ground and hacked her to death once. These attacks were frequently lethal. 
Bintz also had a big sexual appetite. She had relationships with the male guards at Ravensbrook in addition to coercing the female captives into having sex with her. They would pet each other vigorously while seeing victims get tortured in front of them. Recalling these acts, many prisoners agreed to how the silence fell as she appeared at the Pellplatz. She reportedly carried a whip and a leashed German shepherd. And at a moment's notice, she would either choose to murder a prisoner or kick them to death. According to rumors, she was dating SS officer Edmund Browning when she was incarcerated. According to reports, the pair would take laughing strolls around the camp to observe detainees being flogged. They shared a home outside the camp's gates until Browning was sent to Buchenwald concentration camp in late 1944. Many recalled that women prisoners under her suffered a lot more and would sometimes beg for their death. All of the women's circumstances were unfavorable, but according to my research, the Jewish women's events were the worst. They received harsher treatment and had less fortunate living situations, said Dr. Seidel. Jewish inmates were transported from Ravensbrück between 1942 and 1943. Many were deported to Auschwitz and other locations, while others were brought to the gas chamber in Bernberg, a neighboring site. Dr. Seidel explains that Jewish political prisoners received unusual punishment during their service period. You had a much higher chance of surviving if you were a political prisoner and not Jewish. They slaughtered the Jewish women's political captives, whether they were socialists or communists. Arrest warrants featured many columns, including one for political prisoners and others. Jewish was also included in a separate column. These women had ticked off both columns. Bintz had a lot in common with those vicious guards who never felt bad about what they did. However, everyone was shocked by Bintz's insatiable appetite for violence. She stood out from the Nazi party because of her insane personality, leading to others copying her ideas. But it wasn't the only thing that happened. Although her acts of savagery were not particularly unique from others, her young age and her brutality were shocking. Her hands wouldn't hesitate, even when hitting pregnant or elderly ladies. In one such instance, a pregnant woman in the camp gave birth to a stillborn child due to the constant beatings. One of them had to see the preparations for the burial of her one-year-old child. The moment had finally come for Bintz to pay for her savagery. Bintz fled on her bicycle as Russian soldiers rolled into Ravensbrück and captives were carried from the camp on a death march. On May 3, 1945, she was taken prisoner by the British occupation forces and sent to Recklinshausen, a former subcamp of Buchenwald, before being transferred to Hamlin Prison. At the Ravensbrück war crimes trials, she was put on trial alongside members of the SS by a British court. She was found guilty of committing war crimes, given the death penalty and executed by British executioner Albert Pierpoint on the gallows at Hamlin Prison on May 2, 1947, using the long drop method. The Second World War saw savagery at its most intense. The captives were kept by the Reich in a great deal of misery in their concentration camps. There are numerous reports of violence, brutality and murder committed by SS guards like Dorothea Bintz within the concentration camps, where she reportedly killed detainees in cold blood. One of the biggest camps, Ravensbrück is most known for housing primarily female prisoners of war during World War II. However, it also served as a training ground for the vicious SS women guards. Bintz receives most of the credit for instructing the female guards, which results in the camp's walls still being warm from the blood and screams of captives. Only 19 years old at the time of her voluntary service at the Ravensbrück concentration camp, Dorothea Bintz had no idea that she would be setting new standards for sadism while there. She swiftly advanced through the ranks, eventually becoming a supervisor. The ultimate finding against her and for her demise came from her evil deeds, which included whipping prisoners to death and intimidating them with her dog. Almost all of the Ravensbrook survivors' memoirs we have found so far feature at least one mention of Dorothea Bintz. In The Bunker, the cell block where camp punishments were administered, they point to her rigorous application of the penalty. According to numerous prisoners, her propensity to flaunt her connection with her married boyfriend, Edmund Browning, by kissing him while the girls were being beaten and tortured, was the most atrocious of all. Though Bintz was punished for her deeds, her brutal acts remain in Ravensbrook camp. Camp walls are still alarmed by the brutality of several guards. 
Nevertheless, Bintz tried to make the best of what she was given. That is why anti-Jewish tendencies in camps were kept under control by her. Nobody anticipated Dorothea Bintz's short life to end up this way. It was completely unexpected. Of course, she could have been in a much better situation, but no one can predict where fate will lead them. Well, in the end, she reaped what she sowed. <laughs>